Recently at the 2024 All In Summit, Elon Musk issued a stark warning about the future. He highlighted how rapid advances in AI and robotics could lead to a major existential crisis, potentially making many human jobs obsolete. This raises a crucial question. What will people do in a world increasingly run by machines? The humanoid robots just keep coming. Neo is the latest, built by robotics company 1X. What do you think your greatest skills are? Well, I would say that one of my greatest skills is my ability to interact with humans in a conversational manner. Today we've got thousands of robots that do one thing. The future is one robot that can do thousands of different things. Well, how do we find meaning in a world where AI can do everything we can do, but better? That, that, is, that is perhaps the bigger challenge. AI and robots will replace human labor. Well, this concern isn't new. Fears about automation replacing human jobs have existed for decades. For example, a recent report from Goldman Sachs estimated that generative AI could affect around 300 million jobs globally, highlighting the scale of potential disruption. In May 2023 alone, AI was linked to nearly 4,000 job cuts in the US, according to challenger Gray and Christmas Inc. But the most likely issue is like, well, how do we find meaning in a world where AI can do everything we can do, but better? That, that, is, that is perhaps the bigger challenge. Um, although, you know, at this point, I know more and more people who are retired and they seem to enjoy that life. So, uh, but I think that, that may be, may, maybe there'll be some crisis of meaning, like it, because the computer can do everything you can do, but better. So may, maybe that'll be a challenge. Uh, but, but really, uh, you know, you need, you need the sort of end effectors. You need the, the ro autonomous cars and you need the sort of humanoid robots or ro your general purpose robots. Uh, but the, the, once you have general purpose humanoid robots um, and autonomous vehicles, uh, you really, you, you, you can build anything. Turing test is outdated. In the summit, Elon also mentions that the Turing test wants a benchmark to measure how convincingly a computer could emulate human conversation is no longer relevant. Well, if you don't know, the Turing test was created by Alan Turing in 1950. In this test, there was a person and a computer. The goal was for the computer to try and convince a human judge that it was also a person through conversation. If the judge couldn't tell which was the computer and which was the human, the computer passed the test. The rate of improvement of AI is faster than any technology I've ever seen by far. And, and, and it, it's, I mean, like the, 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 for example, the Turing test used to be a thing. Now, you, you know, your basic uh, open source, random LLM, you're writing on a friggin' Raspberry Pi probably could, uh, you know, beat the Turing test. Nowadays, language models like ChatGPT4 and the new O1 model can give very advanced answers and reasoning. Sometimes, their responses are so good that we might wonder if we're talking to a chatbot or a human. ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci, Come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente, sì. This change means we need to rethink what we consider intelligent behavior. If you'd like to learn more about how the Turing test was conducted in its early days, watch this video by clicking the I button and subscribe. Robots may someday outnumber humans. 
because of the push to develop AI-powered humanoid robots for home and business. Musk said he foresees them outnumbering humans two to one someday. I mean, it's going to be that one to one, two to one. What do you think ultimately if we're sitting here in 30 years, the number of robots on the planet versus humans? Yeah, I think the number of robots will vastly exceed the number of humans. Vastly, Could, yeah. Vastly okay. exceed. I mean, you have to say like, who, who would not want their robot buddy? Everyone wants a robot buddy. Um, you know, this is like, it, it, especially if it can, you know, you know, it can take care of your, your, take your dog for a walk. It could, you know, mow, mow the lawn. It, it could watch your kids. Uh, it could, you know, like, it could, it could teach your kids. It could, it could. But we could uh, also send it to Mars. I mean, yeah, absolutely. We could send a lot of robots to Mars to do the work needed to yeah. make it a colonized planet for humans. Mars is already the robot planet. There's like a whole bunch of, yeah. you know, robots, like rovers and only robots. helicopter. Yes, yeah, only robots. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, no, I, th I think the, the sort of useful humanoid robot opportunity is the single biggest opportunity ever. Um, because if you assume like that, I mean, the, the, I think the ratio of humanoid robots to humans is going to be at least two to one, maybe three to one. Because everybody, everybody, everybody will want one, and then there will be a bunch of robots that you don't see that are making goods and services. And you think it's a general one generalized robot that then learns how to do different tasks, or yeah? Hey, um, I mean, we, we are a generalized. Uh, ro yeah, we're a generalized. <laughs> we're, we're just non robot. We're just made of meat. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're a meat bot. A generalized we're, we're, meat bot. Yeah, I mean, I'm operating my meat puppet, you know, um, humanoid robots um, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, you really, you 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 can build anything, um, and 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 this this I think that there's no actual limit to the size of the economy. I mean, there's obviously you, you know the mass of Earth, you know, like that would be alone, one limit, um, but the you know the the economy is is really just the average productivity per person times number of people, that's the economy. And if you've, if you've got humanoid robots that can do, you know, where there's no real limit on the number of humanoid robots, um, and, and they, they can operate very intelligently, then, then there's no actual limit to the economy, in it. there's no meaningful limit to the economy. Optimus is advancing rapidly. While talking about robots outnumbering humans, Musk mentioned his company's famous robot, Optimus. He said that through the development of the Optimus robot at Tesla, the company has learned a lot about how the human body works and why it is shaped the way it is. He specifically pointed to the shape of the fingers and thumb, which will guide future developments of Optimus. As we were designing Optimus, we sort of learned more and more about why humans are shaped the way they're shaped. And, you know, and why we have five fingers and why your little finger is smaller than, you know, your index finger, uh, you know, you know, obviously why you have opposable thumbs, but also why, for example, your, the muscles, the major muscles that operate your hand are actually in your forearm and, and your fingers are primarily operated, you know, like, <laughs> um, your, 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 the, the muscles that actuate your fingers um, are located the vast majority of, the, of, the, of your finger strength is actually coming from your forearm, um, and your fingers are being operated by tendons, little strings. That, that, that's, and so the current version of the Optimus hand uh, has the actuators in the hand and has only 11 degrees of freedom. So it can't, it's not as, it doesn't have all the mm. degrees of freedom of human hand, which has, depending on how you count it, a roughly 25 degrees of freedom. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and it's also like not strong enough in certain ways because the actuators have to fit in the hand. Um, so the next generation Optimus hand, uh, which we have in prototype form, uh, the, the actuators have moved to the forearm, just like a human, and they operate the, the fingers through cables, just like a human hand. And, uh, and, and, it, and the, the next generation hand has 22 degrees of freedom, um, which we think is, a, in, in, enough to do almost anything that a human can do. Elon isn't alone in this race. 
he's competing to build and bring large-scale humanoid robots to the market against rival developers like Figure AI, Meta, NVIDIA, and German car manufacturer Mercedes-Benz. If you want to know more about these humanoid robots, watch this video on your screen.